Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for HP Discover. This is theCUBE, out on the ground extracting the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. We're here with Craig Nunes, Vice President of Marketing Alliance HP Storage. Storage is the hot story, obviously in the marketplace. Uh, storage for the past literally four years has been on fire catapulting all the companies involved in converged infrastructure, social media, big data, cloud, really powering next generation data centers, and a person who's been with us commentating is Craig Nunes. Welcome back to theCUBE again. Thanks, buddy. The, Good uh, to be here. So Dave and I were just talking to David Scott. Obviously the keynote was a huge success here at HP Discover, packed house, where he had to put him on the bill again, yes. which is historic. Tell, share the story there. So we had um, uh, a uh, uh, packed hall, probably uh, 400 people in the room. Uh, we had to turn away about 200 uh, attendees, unfortunately, so we are going to uh, run again tomorrow at noon. We've got David uh, coming up uh, in the general session keynote with uh, Bill Vecti to you know, kind of hit the high points, what's going on in storage. So uh, hot topic, a lot of people here want to know what's happening with HP Storage. So the enterprise group at HP now run by Bill Vecti is obviously under uh, new leadership there. The market's changing, and anything uh, from your perspective changed in terms of the product mix, obviously your announcements with the flash stuff has been compelling. Um, is there a shift internally at HP with respect to kind of market uh, reaction to, to the trends? Are there things that you're seeing out there that were different than last year that we should know about? So I think uh, uh, for sure the, the, the uh, approach to Flash is a big deal. Let me give you some numbers. Um, we introduced the uh, three-part store serve all Flash array, the 7450, one year ago. When we introduced that platform, the uh, cost per usable gig was uh, about $13. That was uh, EMLC drives, our latest compaction technology. In 12 months, $13 has become less than two. So uh, that focus has been uh, tremendous. Uh, that is hot. Software-defined storage is uh, uh, also one of the hottest things going in the market. I think we're seeing a huge uptake, small, medium business. Uh, remote office uh, environments, and we're seeing a big uptake with uh, our cloud customers. So outside well. of the big enterprises that have large scale, hyperscale, whatever you want to call it, you mentioned SME, small, medium sized enterprises or businesses. Yeah. They want turnkey, right? Your cloud has certainly showed that I don't need to have a big exchange server for email sitting in a telephone closet or a server closet. I can use cloud technologies or have a smaller data center from a mid sized company. How has the game changed for those guys procuring, still buying storage, and what are their needs? Um, so, so uh, broadly speaking, and I'll kind of come at it from the software-defined storage uh, perspective, because that's you know, really what folks are thinking a lot about these days. If they have um, a virtualization environment going, they, they know they've got to get into shared, resilient storage to get, uh, get their environment up off the ground. And software-defined storage is shared, resilient storage without buying shared resilient storage. And for those guys, like you said, turnkey, it is converged infrastructure in a box, low cost, easy to manage. It is a great solution for What does that mean to the customer, that, that customer? Uh, no hassles, just turnkey? I mean, hassle drop free, in. Uh, <coughs> from a budget perspective, awesome. Um, and literally, procuring, uh, deploying, configuring storage is, is like, uh, firing up a VM. I mean, it's that easy. Literally. Also, you're seeing some larger capabilities also moving down into the other, down in the market where you see, you normally see them in large enterprises, like big data. Yeah. Dave and I were talking earlier. Big data stuff is you park it away. You might not need low latency, but you want to have good cost per gigabyte uh, situation. You might roll stuff into a MySQL database for transactional or structured databases yeah. for transactions. The mix and match of those use cases are now coming down into the medium-sized enterprises. What does that mean for customers as they start to think about that? Where I can be a transactional business, but I also want to store all the social data or the big data. Yeah, so there, so, uh, generally speaking, I think a small or medium-sized uh, enterprise 
fundamentally what they desire is what is being run in the larger enterprises. They've just got to find a way to fit it into a, a tighter budget. So whether it is um, a software-defined storage approach, uh, very cost-effective, or if you're a high-growth bu high growth business and you're looking to you know, accelerate out of there onto maybe uh, software-defined storage on, a, on an appliance, um, or even handle a second site, replication requirements. That is all part of the offer that HP Storage brings into that space. So uh, We're talking about resilience. What does resilience mean to you? And obviously you mentioned in a quote, I was uh, reading a CRN article yeah. where you were quote saying that, uh, you know, Flash is going mainstream. Okay, you know, obviously that means more companies will be using it. Uh, but what does resilient mean in your mind? When you, just, when you talk about resilience. So to me, resilience is, uh, having the capability within a platform to handle uh, anything that might go wrong and still serve the application uh, with performance customers need. So I'll give you a great example um, uh, from a resilience standpoint. Dual controller arrays, two controllers. If the worst happens and you lose a controller, the impact to the application, you can still get to data, the impact to the application is like 70 or 80% performance drop. That kills any business application. That is not resilience, right? Resilience is lose a controller, application still runs with the bulk of its performance. You can only get to that if you've got a, a, a controller architecture that goes beyond the dual controller limitations, which is exactly uh, what converged storage is built on, what 3 uh, uh is built on um, from, from top to bottom. So I'm excited about the $2 per gigabyte, sub yeah. $2 per gigabyte. I just posted a, a graphic on, on CrowdChat there. I'll show you too, Craig, so John can see it. But it was a, a chart that David Floyer produced in 2009 that basically said he had three scenarios for price declines of flash relative to spinning disk. And his premise was flash costs are going to come down faster than spinning disk, which they have. And he said if it comes down 50%, 60%, or 70%, here's the three scenarios. It basically showed that by 2014 would be the crossover point. Yeah, yeah. 14 to 15, and we're pretty much there. Yeah. So my question is, are high performance, so-called high performance spinning disks an oxymoron? Are they essentially dead? I think 15K SAS drives are dead. They're cooked. Yeah, absolutely. So, so it's and either Bitbucket, slow, SATA, cheap. Right, yeah, 7K, right. um, 7K drives still have a uh, good cost profile today. Um, but if you're on 15K drives or if you're tiering for, for um, better response times, uh, yesterday was the end of life uh, of that portfolio. And in fact, you know, how about this? Dave, I want you to go out and I want you to go buy a, a gig a of gig. flash. Awesome. Go, go for it. <laughs> yeah. our, our I got my two the, bucks. Our gift to the Courtesy king, of right? Craig Nunez. Yeah, Thank you. Right on. <laughs> awesome. You can, you can you even buy an ice cream for two bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not in Palo Alto. <laughs> <laughs> Not in San Francisco either. <laughs> All right, let's talk about backup. Let's shift gears backup. a little bit. You guys yes. have been very aggressive in that space. Absolutely. In the store once. Uh, you've got this beautiful end-to-end -end architecture. It's a technology that came out of HP Labs. Give us the update. Sure, so uh, for folks who might have missed it a few months back, we rolled the entire lineup, low to high, from uh, software through our hardware appliance lineup. So the Store Once VSA uh, 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 rolled out new, 2,000 and 4,000 kind of entry and mid-range, all the way up to our 6,000 high end. The, um, uh, now the, the interesting thing about backup is um, whenever you ask folks, how's it going? Uh, generally speaking, backup continues to be an area where folks are not happy with what they've, what they've got on the floor. Um, the uh, issues are, if you look at corporate data, I think 90% uh, of corporate data is all two years new. Um, people have been slow to invest in their uh, infrastructure and their backup infrastructure. And so uh, part of what we're tackling with the StoreOnce lineup is uh, taking a lot of that complexity that they've got on their floor today uh, with some big new announcements that we made here at the show. Like what? The, uh, well, I think the, the flagship announcement was taking the, uh, the complexity of managing your backup stores. So what people do today, uh, they have single node appliances, 
um, limited from a compute and capacity perspective. So at some point you hop to a second, a third, a fifth, a tenth, on and on. With each appliance, you've got a number of stores. Backup store for files, backup for database. You group them together for better deduplication. As soon as you go to a second appliance, you, you have to rep, repeat all of that. You lose all the deduplication that goes on across that. So we had an idea. We thought, what if we could bring a, in effect, a virtualization layer across controllers, uh, across capacity, and, and just hand folks a petabyte size virtualized pool. So you set up your backup stores once, under the covers, the hardware is effectively uh, backing up portions of that. Backups are faster, deduplication efficiency is better. Management is absolutely simplified. Is your, You're managing is one your thing pool. instead of four or 10 or whatever. So um, that oh, cool. we think is uh, uh, a big, um, uh, a big announcement, and it's been tried in our industry before to actually drive a pool uh, across controllers and, and bring management and deduplication value. Um, and in fact, I uh, recall that, uh, in fact, DMC, Data Domain, uh, strapped two single node appliances together. It lasted about a year and a half on the market. Pulled it, simply wasn't uh, delivering the promise. Um, what we uh, are doing across uh, multiple controllers, multiple drives, never been done before in our class and delivers uh, uh, outstanding value. Customers are very excited about it. All right, let's talk about uh, software-defined storage. So, a lot of hype around software-defined storage. I saw I was walking around earlier, it said you guys are number one market share yeah. uh, in software-defined storage. I think that's a Wikibon number. We got no <laughs> love on the on the stat, but I think that's, I think, I think we're the only guys who have ever quantified the, the software-defined storage. So, why software-defined storage? Why all the hype now? You guys have had your version of SDS for a while. You just kind of naming it and saying, hey guys, by the way, we've had this for years. Yep. Why all the hype now? So, a uh, couple of things. One is, I think, uh, virtualization is pretty well ubiquitous. That's a key enabler. Mm -hmm. um, the, the horsepower uh, in your, uh, uh, server processors, tremendous. Um, drives are larger and larger, and so fundamentally, folks are in virtualized environments with resources that are not fully consuming. And fundamentally, what we're talking about is taking a um, you know, software-defined storage, we call it a virtual storage appliance. Drop it in the server infrastructure, harness those resources that you already own, and turn that into resilient shared storage for virtualization, right? It's, uh, it's the most cost-effective way to uh, expand your virtualization environment. Um, compatible with any server infrastructure. We happen to love uh, ProLiant around here, but it'll run with your IBM server infrastructure, Dell server infrastructure, whatever. So your point of view on software-defined storage is, is different than some of the other visions that are being put forth there. From what I see, I mean, you're shipping product, um, you've been shipping product for years, yeah, right? Yeah, seven years. Seven years. Yeah, we right. are up to, uh, in fact, with a, um, a program that we're running with uh, our server platform, uh, every single server that ships uh, goes out with a uh, license for store virtual VSA. Um, we are up to uh, uh, nearly 900,000 licenses that have been shipped. Uh, that equates to about two and a half exabytes of store virtual VSA capacity. So essentially you can pool that capacity, that server-based capacity. Yeah, exactly. Um, why would a customer, talk about why a customer would purchase your solution versus say a vSAN solution. So um, first of all. vSAN I should say is from VMware's you know, latest software-defined storage push. Yeah, so the, um, so number one, when we talk to uh, our customers, generally speaking, they're looking for a platform, and a platform that is interoperable with their environment today and in the future, and, and uh, we support uh, uh, VMware environments, Microsoft environments, and uh, we're announcing support for KVM environments. Uh, uh, vSAN supports one environment, and uh, no intention to support uh, anything else. The, um, the well, it can't, right? I mean, essentially. It's, it's yeah, a feature it's, of, it's embedded. of the hypervisor. Yeah. Um, 
and, and, and in many ways, vSAN is, is an ease of use feature for vCenter. It's not truly a storage platform. Um, we uh, provide a, a, a synchronous replication capability so you can protect uh, what is in your uh, VSA. We allow you to move hot data from software VSA to, to a storage platform. We can provision external storage that you want to repurpose. Um, all of those things are lacking in vSAN. Um, and like I said, vSAN is uh, effectively a ease of use feature for vCenter. It's, it's a V1 uh, product associated with uh, vSphere only. And we, I, I give you a great customer quote. Financial services customer um, looking at software defined storage, very excited about it, and their take is, look, I could never propose a storage platform decision based on a feature of a single hypervisor. No way it would it fly in the bank, right? And what we are talking about is a storage platform that'll run on any server platform, run across hypervisors, and deliver that, that cost value, but with the resilience, the availability uh, that, that folks are looking for for their critical data. Excellent, all right, Craig, we have to leave it there. All right. Okay, I was going to ask you, I've got, got a chat here, uh, a question from our crowd chat. Craig, could you please define software-defined storage quickly? I will do. Software-defined storage, first of all, it's software. It is full storage capability uh, in software. It uh, uh, runs on any server platform. There is no uh, uh, underlying hardware dependency uh, for that software. And it is scale out or federated, so you can really uh, grow it and manage it across your server infrastructure. Craig Nunez, VP of Marketing Alliance here at HP Storage. Been here from the beginning with the three part acquisition. Get the start of I just saw someone posted your innovative uh, marketer. Congratulations, <laughs> of course. Big fan of the queue, we appreciate that. Right we are here live at HP where all the actions happen around converged infrastructure, consumerization of IT, or as HP says, new style of IT. This is the queue. We'll be right back after this short break.